Formal versus Informal Learning by Ken Biddington. Key Terms Formal Learning Done or carried out in accordance with established or prescribed rules. Informal Learning Not officially prepared, organized, or sanctioned. Difference between Formal and Informal Learning Formal Learning Traditionally in the classroom, Design, delivered, measured, and or need determined by someone other than the learner. In formal learning, it is a process of learning that takes place in everyday experience, often at subconscious levels, where the learning process is neither determined nor designed by an organization, and control of learning rests primarily in the hands of the learner. Benefit of formal and informal learning. Formal learning. Large numbers of students will learn the same information and or processes at the same time. If properly designed, the course content should be accurate and up to date. Properly designed formal training programs can include a variety of methods to appeal to all learning styles and conform to adult learning principles. Informal learning. Creating informal learning situations can be less costly and more time efficient given all of the social media technologies and electronic devices we have today. Learning informally can be more personal and less intimidating for some people. Subject matter experts may be more willing to share their knowledge with others in this way. Since learning this way happens more naturally during the flow of someone's workday, employees may be less likely to resist learning new things. 10 Characteristics of Informal Learning Informal learning is never organized. Informal learners are often highly motivated to learn. Informal learning is often spontaneous. There is no formal curriculum. The teacher is someone who cares and who has more experience than the learner. The world is your classroom. Informal learning is difficult to quantify. Often dismissed by academics and skeptics as being worthless, essential to a child's early development, and lastly, essential to an adult's lifelong learning. Informal learning is never organized. There are no set formulas or guidelines. Examples of informal learning include activities such as teaching your child the alphabet or how to brush his or her teeth. There's no prescriptive programs of study for this. Informal learners are often highly motivated to learn. Unlike the formal learning environment of school, informal learners are often eager and attentive. A teenager showing a friend how to find an Easter egg in a video game is an example of informal learning. The gamer really wants to find how to achieve his goal, so he embarks on a journey to figure out how. His friend becomes his teacher. Informal learning is often spontaneous. Learning happens anywhere, anytime. The learner is inspired to learn because of an immediate desire to know how to do something or understand a topic. Or an informal teacher sees an opportunity to share their knowledge or wisdom with someone else. For example, someone recently was standing in line at the airport waiting to go through security. There was a family in front of them. The father, who was holding the hand of his young son, who was about seven or eight, used the posters on the wall of the security area to teach the boy to read new words. The boy sounded out the words and they talked about the content of the poster. This not only helped to pass the time during a long wait, it was a great example of spontaneous informal learning. There is no formal curriculum. There is no program of study or prescriptive methods. Whatever methods used are the ones that the person teaching knows how to teach, often based on their own experience. The teacher is someone who cares and who has more experience than the learner. Even the word teacher here is a bit of a misnomer, wrong or inaccurate use of the name or term, because professional teachers all have credential, certificates, or a teaching license. In the informal learning context, those leading the learning are likely to be emotionally close to the person who is learning, such as a mother, father, grandparent, or other caregiver. An adult child teaching an older parent how to use new technology is an example. The world is your classroom. 
It is a myth that learning happens in a school or in a classroom. When informal learning, there is no classroom. Your home, the neighborhood park, the community, and the world are the classroom. Informal learning is difficult to quantify. There are no exams and informal learning is difficult to quantify. Often dismissed by academics and skeptic as being worthless. Informal learning is often overlooked and not regarded as particularly valid learning. Some researchers and academics have the opinion that informal learning is less valuable than formal. Prescriptive learning due in part to the fact that it is difficult to quantify and they believe that if it cannot be quantified, it has no value. Essential to a child's early development. Learning your mother tongue is an excellent example of informal learning. Imagine if a child were not exposed to any language for the first five years. How difficult would the child's development become? It is an experiment that, as far as I know, has never been done. It would be considered too risky and unethical. Everything a young child learns at home is informal learning, from how to brush their teeth to how to say the alphabet to good manners. Without informal learning, we would never be able to cope in a formal learning environment. Essential to an adult lifelong learning. An informal learning is a lifelong process. It does not end when a child enters school and the formal system takes over. On the contrary, children continue to learn at home. As we get older, we learn from our friends. As we enter the workforce, we learn from our co-workers. Into retirement, we still learn from friends and also from those younger than us. An adult learning to read and write from a volunteer literacy tutor is one example. A retired officer, worker, learning to, from her grandson how to use an iPad is another example.